Good day everybody, this is Dr. Sanjay Sani, our Professor Department Chair. This is going to be a demonstration of the carpal bones and their associated joints. So you're seeing this, the articulated skeleton of the right side. Just to bring up to speed, this is the ulna, this is the radius. This is the radiocarpal joint and these are the carpal bones. These are the metacarpals. So this is the metacarpal of the thumb, second, third, fourth and fifth, the little finger. And these are the phalanges. It is said that this is the X-ray of the wife of Runchen, the discoverer of X-ray, though this has not been verified. So let's focus on the carpal bones on the right side. We see this one here. This is the PC form. Under that, we see the next bone. That is the triquetral. Then we have the lunate. Then we have the scaphoid. Then we have the trapezium. Then we have the trapezoid. Then we have the capitate, the hamate. This is the plain x-ray of the right hand to show the carpal bones which have been labeled. And this is the coronal MRI of the hand to show the carpal bones which also have been labeled. I'm going to repeat these carpal bones again on the left side. So now I have shifted to a skeleton on the left side. Here again you can see this is the ulnar side. This is the little finger and this is the thumb. Here we can see only the carpal bones. Disregard for the time being these beads here. These have been there just to hold the bones in place. This is the pisiform, the triquetral, the lunate, scaphoid, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, hamate. These are the copper bones that we can see on the left side. This is an enlarged x-ray of the left hand to show the carbon bones. They have not been labeled. It is for you to label them. Now let's come back to the previous skeleton, the pisiform. It is like a seed, that's why it's called pisiform, like a seed. This is, in effect, a sesamoid bone within the tendon of the flexor carpi ulnaris. The flexor carpi ulnaris comes like this. This bone is inserted within that tendon and extending from this pisiform bone, there is a ligament which goes from the pisiform bone to the hook of hamate and that is called the pisohamate ligament. Pisohamate ligament incidentally forms the boundaries of a small canal, approximately an inch or so, which I shall mention later, which is called the Gaon's canal. So this is the pisiform bone. It's a small seed-like bone. Under that, we have the triquetral. This is roughly shaped like triangular pyramid. That's why it is called triquetral. To understand the shape, I will again take you back to the previous one. This is the other skeleton. And you can see that this is the triquetral and it looks somewhat like a triangular pyramid. Then we have the lunate. I'm showing the other skeleton, the one on the left hand. Lunate means like half a moon. And you will see, if I turn it, you'll see that it looks like a half a moon. That's why it is called lunate. Then we have the next bone, this is the scaphoid. The scaphoid has got a narrow portion in the middle and that is called the waist of the scaphoid. So therefore this is the distal portion, this is the proximal portion. We can have some important clinical correlations pertaining to the lunate and the scaphoid. If a person falls on his hand, he can have dislocation of the lunate into the carpal tunnel and that can produce carpal tunnel syndrome. So that is one important point to be remembered about the lunate. Similarly, if a person falls on his outstretched hand, he can have a fracture through the waist of the scaphoid. The blood supply to the scaphoid comes from distal to proximal and it is supplied by the palmar carpal branches of the radial artery. So therefore, if there's a fracture through the waist of the scaphoid, the proximal portion, the portion which articulates with the radius, that undergoes avascular necrosis and then it can never unite with the rest of the bone and that can produce permanent wrist disability. So that is about the fracture through the waist of the scaphoid. This is the trapezium. And if you look, you'll find that there's a groove under the trapezium. That is a groove which is formed by the flexor carpi radialis tendon. And I will turn it to show you the groove. That is a groove. And that is called the flexor carpi radialis tunnel. The flexor carpi radialis goes through that and it's partially inserted onto the trapezium and it gets inserted onto the second metacarpal bone. That is the primary insertion and there may be a small insertion on the third metacarpal bone. So this is the groove for the flexor carpi radialis, the flexor carpi radialis tunnel. The trapezoid. Both of these are like a trapezium. Well, this is a smaller one. That's why it is called trapezoid. Capitate. This is the largest bone and it's like a head. That's why it's called capitate. And the hamate is like a hammer and it's got a very prominent projection and that's called the hook of the hamate. This hook of the hamate can be fractured, especially if a person falls on his hand. This is a 3D reconstructed CT scan of the carpal bones to show fracture of the hook of hamate. Moreover, this hook of hamate also forms the boundary of the Guion canal, which I mentioned earlier. In either of these situations, it can produce distal ulnar nerve neuropathy and can produce ulnar claw hand. This is a clinical picture of a patient with distal ulnar neuropathy producing ulnar claw hand. 
Having mentioned these points, now let me mention to you some important attachments of the flexor retinaculum here. So for that, I'm going to come back to the previous skeleton. Okay, this is the pisiform bone. There's a tough ligament which extends across the carpal bones. And that is called the flexor retinaculum. It's also called the transverse carpal ligament. It is attached medially to the pisiform bone and to the hook of amate. Roughly rectangular in shape. Laterally, it is attached to the tubercle of the scaphoid, tubercle of the trapezium. So therefore, it stretches across like this. And therefore, it converts this concave surface into a tunnel. And that is referred to as the carpal tunnel. Passing through this carpal tunnel, we have the four tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis with their synovial sheath and the four tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus, also the same common synovial sheath. These combined synovial sheath is incidentally referred to as the ulnar bursa. And then there's the tendon of the flexor pollicis longus, which goes in its separate synovial sheath. That is called the radial bursa. So therefore, these nine tendons and also passing through the carpal tunnel is the main trunk of the median nerve, which goes through the carpal tunnel and it supplies the muscles of the thenar eminence. So therefore, in carpal tunnel syndrome, there can be hundreds of causes of carpal tunnel syndrome. Median nerve can get compressed and it can produce weakness of the thenar muscles and numbness, stinging, and paresthesia of the lateral three and a half digits. But the palmar skin will be spared because the skin of the palm is supplied by a separate branch which goes outside the carpal tunnel. So that is about the carpal tunnel. Having mentioned that, now let me come back to this and mention a few quick words about the Guion Canal. The Guion Canal is a small approximately 3.5 or 4 centimeter canal which extends like this. It is bounded medially by the pisiform bone and the pisohamid ligament. So proximo medially it is the pisiform bone and pisohamid ligament. Disto laterally is the hook of hamid. The floor is formed by the transverse carpal ligament and the roof is formed by the volar carpal ligament and that is called the Guion canal and that is the one which gives passage to the ulnar nerve. Remember the ulnar nerve does not go through the carpal tunnel but it goes through the Guion canal. And after it passes through, it divides into a deep branch which supplies the muscles of the hand, superficial branch which supplies the skin of the medial one and a half digits and it gives a communicating branch to the median nerve. So therefore, in the Guion Canal, the ulnar nerve can be compressed and that is called the Guion Canal Syndrome. Another condition is called handlebar neuropathy. People who are riding motorcycles for long hours, they can compress the nerve in this region and that is called handlebar neuropathy. So these are some of the points which I wanted to mention to you about the skeleton of the wrist the carpal bones, the carpal tunnel syndrome and the Guion Canal syndrome and the associated pathologies. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe. Have a nice day.